Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to September 2022 of Romania Power BI and Modern Excel User Group monthly meetup. Thank you all for joining our ninth meetup of the year, our 20th, I think, in total. I'm happy to have uh, Chris today presenting uh, on our user group. Thank you again, Chris, for accepting our invitation, and uh, I'm very glad that uh, you could fit it in uh, your schedule. I saw you are quite busy presenting on different user groups, and uh, thank you. It means a lot for us. We are grateful to have you here. Uh, for our newest members, my name is Christian Angel, and uh, I will be your host today. We'll uh, go uh, quickly through our agenda, which is pretty straightforward. Uh, after this short intro, we'll go through our next scheduled meetups. Then uh, Chris will deliver his session. A short Q&A &Q at the end, just before a uh, ROPAG monthly raffle with prizes from uh, Enterprise DNA, our primary official sponsor. And uh, I'll tell you a bit more about this uh, in the next minutes, my usual slide, uh, the organizational stuff. Please make sure that uh, your microphone is muted uh, during the uh, meetup and uh, your camera's video is turned off. Type your questions uh, or comments in the chat area. Uh, I've tested it, it should work. Uh, prefix your questions with a queue in front so I can spot them easier so we can address them to Chris uh, at the end, and if you have any problems with the internet connection, please drop off and uh, join again. And uh, be advised that the session is recorded, and uh, we'll post the recording on our YouTube channel uh, during the weekend, probably. Speaking of uh, next meetups on in October, we have Matthew Roach coming on the 27th again in the in an online um, meetup uh, with a session on building a data culture with power bi and then on the 24th of november we have melissa de corte uh, an enterprise dna expert coming with a session on power query actual problems from the real world and some very good examples that uh, she'll bring in front of us. Uh, if we spoke about future meetups, you can uh, check our past meetups uh, with uh, bit.ly robug underscore history on our YouTube channel. Everything is recorded and uh, I'm pretty sure if you are new to our user group, you'll find a lot of uh, useful sessions there. Speaking of uh, enterprise DNA, uh, since last year in August, Romania Power BI user group was the first user group in the world to have them as sponsors and they are offering uh, on each meetup three full memberships on their site, approximately $1,500. And in order to participate in the raffle, uh, make sure you scan this QR code or go to the uh, URL and fill up the form. Check the uh, option that you want to participate in the raffle and uh, in the end, we'll uh, spin the wheel of names to see who, who's winning. Uh, during the meetup, I will post a link. Don't worry, I will put it in the chat. So if you haven't had the uh, time to scan it, uh, we'll have it in the chat. And uh, one more thing be before uh, going to uh, our session today, just a shout out on uh, a great conference, the fourth edition of the International Conference Bulgaria Excel Days, which is going to be held in uh, November, on November 11th in Sofia, Bulgaria. For the fourth year, the event is organized by IT Training with the courtesy of Microsoft Bulgaria, uh, bringing together some of the world's most famous experts in the field of Microsoft Excel, Power BI, Power BI VBA, financial modeling, and data analysis and visualization. In addition to the five conferences, uh, to the conference, there will be five masterclasses, and uh, 
there will be 12 top speakers in the in the program with a lot of um, knowledgeable people. Uh, I'm pretty sure that if you are here, you heard about Chandu, Oz du Soleil, uh, Gasper Kamenchek, Ellen Murray, all these uh, experts in the... Actually, I attended in 2019, Bulgaria Excel Days was the last live conference before COVID. I attended that one and uh, I'm planning to go this one and uh, I hope uh, I'll meet some of you at least there in November. So coming back to our presentation today, welcome again Chris and uh, thank you for accepting our invitation. As I said before, I'm really, gla I'm really glad that Chris agreed to come and present as he's one of the most knowledgeable experts in the BI community with uh, more than 20 years on, of experience on all kinds of topics. He has been dabbling with uh, so many Microsoft BI related te technologies that uh, I will let him mention them so I don't miss one. And I actually found his blog some years ago, some many years ago, searching for some Power Query and uh, Power Pivot topics that uh, I couldn't find uh, elsewhere. So yes, Excel is also one of his uh, expertise, one of his uh, areas of expertise, let's say like this. Uh, his blog is uh, one of the most complete reference in the industry, uh, started back in 2004, I think, with uh, more than 1000 articles in 2014 already. I'm not sure which is the uh, actual number now. And uh, I totally recommend all of you to subscribe or follow by email and stay up to date with uh, Chris' latest blog post. Uh, together with uh, the other almost 20,000 uh, subscribers that uh, he has. Since a few years now, Chris is working with uh, Microsoft uh, in the Power BI customer advisory team. And uh, until then, uh, he was a trainer and a consultant on the SQL analysis services, Power BI, and all kinds of other Microsoft technologies. Uh, we've met in person back in March in the SQL Beats in London, and uh, I'm really happy to meet you again, Chris, virtually this time. And, uh, maybe we'll meet again uh, next SQL Beats in Cardiff. Absolutely, uh, I hope so. Please, a few words about you and the stage is yours. Well, thank you. Um, I think you, you pretty much said everything that, um, that there is to say about me. Um, probably the only thing that I'm going to say, well, I'm going to say two things in advance. Um, first of all, I am definitely not an Excel expert. I know some bits of Excel very well, but um, I am not going to pretend that I am an Excel expert. Uh, so if I say something that's that's wrong about Excel, forgive me. I know Power BI very well, but um, Excel is more of a passion than a, a, a day job. <laughs> the second thing is um, I've noticed doing presentations recently that um, whenever I have video on in Teams, it really makes my presentations go slow when I'm sharing my screen. So uh, I'm going to keep my video on for a few more moments, and then turn it off. Um, I'm going to turn off incoming video as well. Uh, if for whatever reason I accidentally mute myself or I disappear or something goes wrong, somebody please unmute themselves and just say, hey, Chris, we can't hear you. Um, so uh, please I'll do be that here. for me. <laughs> Thank I'll you. I'll be here. Cool. All right. Well, let me turn off my camera and start with the presentation. So as I said, I work on the Power BI CAT team, but there is no Power BI at all in this presentation. This is a, a pure modern Excel presentation. And I got the idea for this presentation talking to another Excel MVP, Cena Alves, um, a couple of months ago, because I do, I do like to blog about Excel BI features. And you know, she she sent me a challenge. She said, Well, you know. Excel has got some really cool new features recently. Does this mean that Excel is now a much better BI tool than it was? 
does this mean that we don't actually need Power BI anymore? You know, how good of a BI tool is Excel? And, you know, in particular, and I think this is relevant for, for everybody here, what's changed in Excel recently? You know, a lot of the BI functionality in Excel is, is now quite old. It goes back to, what, 2007 or whenever, whenever Power Pivot first appeared. So what's changed recently? You know, if you formed your opinion of Excel as a BI tool 15 years ago, does anything that's new in Excel make it more likely for you to want to use Excel as a BI tool? That's what I'm going to talk about today. Um, in terms of the scope for the presentation, I'm going to limit myself to Excel on the desktop. All of my demos will be on Windows. Of course, I work for Microsoft, but I will mention a few things about Excel on the Mac. I don't have a Mac. I'm not going to be knowledgeable about the Mac, but there's a few things to say about it. And I am also going to show some demos with Excel online. I am going to assume you have the very latest uh, version of Excel. Um, I have a, an insider's build, but I'm going to assume that you've got at least a Microsoft 365 subscription and you're using a fairly modern build of Excel. And I am going to allow the use of Power Automate. So there may not be any Power BI, but I do think Power Automate is really essential for some of the things that I'm going to show you. Basically, what I'm going to do in this presentation is go through various different types of BI that you uh, that you might consider, because, you know, when people talk about BI, they might mean lots of different things. So I'm going to look at lots of different forms of BI, lots of different interpretations of what BI is and see if we can implement them in Excel and how well we can do it. All right, so let's start with that first question. What do you actually mean by BI? Because like I said, it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. The simplest form of BI is literally just running a query against a database, getting a table of data and putting it on the worksheet. And then maybe I don't know, you could print it out uh, and stick it on the uh, notice board at work or something like that. Something a little bit more complicated would be parameterizing that, you know, entering a date or a product or a store and then pressing a button and then getting the uh, table of data filtered for that date or store or product. Moving on from that, we might want to take that approach and instead of making this a manual process where everybody has to go into Excel, type in some parameters, press a button and get the results out, you might want to automatically run these uh, reports on a schedule and send them out somehow. And then, of course, you might want to do something completely different, but also BI. You might want to do exploratory analysis. You want to slice and dice your data. And then finally, you might want to build interactive reports and dashboards, the kind of thing that Power BI is really good at. So let's go through each of these and see how well Excel can do them. OK, so the first, the simplest form of Excel, like Excel BI, is going to be running a query and getting the results of that query against the database into a table on the worksheet and maybe parameterizing this. Now, the good news is that this is really easy to do. This is something you can do with Power Query in Excel and something you've been able to do pretty much ever since Power Query first came into Excel. So let me demonstrate what I mean by this. I've got an empty Excel workbook here. This is, like I said, Windows Excel. I'm going to go to the data tab where I get hold of the Power Query options. I'm going to go to get data from database from SQL Server database. I have SQL Server running on my local PC. I'm going to connect to it. This is the old AdventureWorks DW sample database. I'm going to click OK. And let's find the table you want to query. It's going to be fact internet sales. This is the table with sales data in. I'm going to click on transform.
And then here, well, there's a lot of columns. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to choose the order date. I'm going to grab the sales order number columns class. Control, run, shift. Grab the sales order number, sales order line number, and let's get the sales amount and the tax amount. And let's call this sales. Right click, remove other columns, and let's just filter this down to one date for a start. There we are. We've got the sales orders for what's this? The 29th of December 2010. And I can click close and load to put this on the worksheet, put it on the existing worksheet, click OK. There we are. So we've done the simple thing and got our table of data. And of course, this is a Power Query query. If the data's changed, I can click refresh, rerun the query, and the new data appears here. All right, so that's the first simplest form of BI. The next thing we probably want to be able to do is to be able to parameterize this somehow. So how can we do this? Well, let's put a parameter in here. Let's say date. Now, for the sake of making this demo nice and easy, I'm going to keep to using this numeric format for a date, but we could make this a little bit more complicated. And there is a parameter. I'm going to go and, again, to make things easy, just turn this into a table. Get the data from this. So I've got a Power Query query that actually reads value from that table. I'm going to drill down here. So I've only got the number in that single column. Let's make this selected date. And then here, if you have a look at the M code for this particular step, you can see there's the hard coded date, 29th of December, 2010. Let's replace that with the name the selected date query. You can see it's already updated. I'm going to click close and load. Now, the only query that could be closed that could be loaded here is that new one that I just created called selected date. And I don't actually want to load that anywhere. So I'm only going to create a connection. And now I've got something which is effectively parameterized because the date that I have filtering by for my query is the date that I've entered in this table. And if I was to go and make this the 31st, I could go here and manually refresh this. And now I've got the data for 31st. So this helps understand how you can use Power Query to do fairly simple um, reporting functionality. Now, this is pretty ugly. There's a whole bunch of things that I could do to make this better. So rather than keep working on this, let's flick over to this version of the report. A couple of things have changed here. Um, it's still the same basic approach, but you'll see there is now no ugly table because what I'm doing instead is making this cell a named range called sales date. And with Power Query, instead of getting data from an Excel table, I can also get data from a named range. So I'm doing that. And also what I've done here is done some extra logic in the query that reads data from here so that I can enter the date as a date rather than with the um, uh, that horrible numeric format. So I can turn this into the 30th, click and I still rather frustratingly at this point have to refresh here, but now you can see that I've got no ugly table and I can just enter a date. We can do even better 
if we go over to this more advanced demo here, a few things to notice. Um, I've got a selection box up here for product name. Let's maybe increase the size of this. So this not only has a nice drop down, but I could go to this. Let's choose Road Red 48. I can choose a year and a month and even in a day. And I can click a button now to run my report. So no more having to look around in that query pane. How have I done this? Well, this is good old Excel data validation. And now, of course, with data validation in Excel, we've got autocomplete, which is pretty cool. How have I done the slices here? Well, um, OK, so I've got a table with all of my products with autocomplete. For the slices, what I've got here is something a bit more complicated. I've taken my entire date table and loaded it onto a hidden sheet here, well, not hidden. And then I've created some slices to filter on year and month and day number. Now, these are the slices that you see here. So if I was to choose January and day one, 2011, can see that it's filtered this table down here. Now this table I'm then reloading back into Power Query. Uh, I've also got an extra calculated column here with a rather fancy Excel formula that I stole from Charlie Kidd. And this formula will be one if the row is not filtered in the table and zero if it is filtered. So this allows me to find out whether that the slices that I've used have filtered out a row or not. And I can then take this filter on this column in the Power Query query to only get the rows that have actually been selected in the table. And that's how, um, that once I've got that um, list of dates, I can use that in the Power Query query to filter the main table. So that's how I was able to get these slices working. And then finally, I've got some good old VBA as well. Um, what is new in um, VBA with Power Query, and this was introduced, I think, earlier this year or late last year, is that we've now finally got the ability to uh, refresh an individual Power Query query with VBA. So now if I click Run Report. There we are. Actually, there weren't any sales for adjustable races, but you get the idea. I've got something that is even more cool and even more flexible. So. I would say for this type of reporting, which to be honest, Power BI doesn't really do very well, but which is a massively, massively common and important type of reporting, I think Excel plus Power Query makes a, a great job, does a great job here. You can do all of your kind of parameterized reporting using a combination of just Excel and Power Query. Now, I've done all of that in Excel on Windows. The good news is that now you can do quite a lot of this with Excel on the Mac because Power Query is now available in Excel on the Mac with limited data sources, but it's improving very regularly. With the latest version of um, Excel Power Query, you've now got um, SQL Server data sources, ODBC data sources, you can connect to text files, and you can get data from the current workbook. So even though I haven't actually tested it, that last demo that I've just done, or at least certainly the simple one, that would absolutely work in Excel on the Mac. The other question is, well, this is the desktop. Can I do this in the browser? Mm, the answer is no. Um, Power Query is available in Excel online, but it is very, very early days. At the moment, the only data source that Power Query and Excel Online support is anonymous OData sources. And OData is a, a form of um, web service. So the chances are your data is not an anonymous OData source. So you're probably not going to be able to build uh, this type of reporting so solution in the browser with Excel and Power Query. There's another problem, a problem that we're going to come to later, which is that multi user is a problem. If I try and do this, even when Excel in and Power Query online uh, work, um, what you'll find is that if I 
press a button, run my reports and get my data back. And then Christian opens the same Excel file in the browser and presses a button and runs his report. Well, that means that I'll see Christian's data. There's no real multi-user there. Um, and this could be a problem. This, there is a way around it for um, other types of BI, which I'll talk about later. But I don't think this is ever really going to be um, fundamentally fixed with um, Excel and this type of Power Query type solution. Building on this, so far what we've seen is a simple parameterized report that returns tables of data. But sometimes we don't want reports which are just tables of data. Sometimes we want more flexible layouts. We want to be able to do kind of more freeform stuff. Now, of course, if we've got a table of data, we could just use VLOOKUP or XLOOKUP if we're being modern to extract values out of the table and put them into different cells, which is pretty cool. But the thing I wanted to show you next is another way of taking the data from your Power Query query and creating more flexible layouts. Let's see how this is done. So if we go to here, I've got another type of report. Uh, it's the same data. I've got sales order numbers, um, but what I'm doing is I'm now able to change my sales order number. And you can see the customer name, the customer occupation, the product name, the color, the sales amount, the unit price and the tax amount, they all update when I choose the sales order number. So I've done this using a feature called linked data types. You might have played with linked data types. Um, there are all kinds of built-in linked data types for you know, stocks and geographical data. But as well as um, getting Power BI data this way as well, your Power Query queries in Excel can return linked data types. So let's see how I've done this. If I open up the Power Query editor here, here's the um, Power Query query that, powers, that um, is behind this report. Now, if I go back to this step, really all I've got is a slightly more sophisticated version of the, the simple report that I showed before. I can choose a date, uh, it's parameterized like that, and as well as the uh, internet sales columns, I've got some information from a customer table and the product table, giving me things like the name of the customer associated with each sales order and the product, the color, the days to manufacture and all kinds of things like that. So at this point, it's just another table. But then in the final step in my query, I can turn all of this into a data type with this button which is only available in Power Query in Excel. It's not available anywhere else in any other Power Query. And what this does is allow me to take all of those columns and collapse them together into a single column identified by a combination of the sales order number and the line number, and that's called data type. Now, here on this sheet, I've got a date, I've got a my Power Query query that returns the um, linked data type here. So these are all of my linked data types. And what I've got here is again some Excel validation, which allows me to choose one of these data types from this list. And then because this data type for each sales order number has what I would call attributes, which are the customer name, the customer occupation, the product name, all of those columns that we saw from that table in the Power Query editor, I can now extract those values using some Excel formulas um, into my report. So here in this cell, I'm getting the first name and the last name from the linked data type here and putting it as the customer name. For the product color, I'm getting d4.color, the color value associated with the sales order number. And I can get the sales amount value as well. So this is one way of building slightly more flexible layouts in um, Excel with my Power Query based reports. 
So that's more or less enough for that type of reporting. Um, as I said, I think Power Query and Excel is a very, very cool combination that allows you to do all kinds of things. And yes, I am looking at the chat and somebody has seen that color and color are spelt two different ways. I'm English. I spell color with a U at the end, but the date is American. So it's uh, <laughs> it's got the American color spelling inside the database. All right, so this allows me as a single user to open up an Excel workbook, run a query, enter some parameters and get a table or a nice layout out. But we don't always want to do this for a single person. Sometimes we want to be able to run reports like this for a large number of people. You know, maybe we've got 100 salespeople and we want to send them their reports on a Monday morning. And of course, we want to do this all in Excel. Well, we can do this using Power Query, but in order to do the automation, what we really need is another member of the Power Platform family, which is Power Automate. Now, if you know Power Automate, you've probably seen the cloud-based version of Power Automate, which allows you to automate common tasks with a nice web-based um, development uh, UI. What a lot of people don't know is that there is also a desktop-based version of Power Automate, uh, called well, Power Automate Desktop. And this allows you to automate common tasks on your desktop, including running Excel reports like this. So let's see how we can do this. Right. I'm not actually going to run this demo because it is painfully slow when um, Teams is running, but I'll show you what it does. First of all, I have a super simple Excel workbook here called Report Dates. And when it opens, you'll see that there is nothing in it apart from three individual dates. These are three dates that I could have passed through Power Query to that simple report that I was showing a little bit earlier. So three possible dates that I could use as parameters. Then I've got something called template report. This is almost exactly the same as that simple Power Query based report that I just showed you. If I open it up, you'll see it's basically the same. I can enter a date, one of those dates from that Excel workbook we just saw, and then refresh the Power Query query through VBA to get this table of data. So we've got a list of possible parameters and we've got a template report. The next thing is to use Power Automate Desktop. Now, this is going to start to look a little bit scary, but I promise you it isn't. I know practically nothing about Power Automate Desktop, and I still managed to get this demo working in about half an hour or so. So what do we want to do with Power Automate Desktop when this runs? Let me step through each of these things. First of all, I'm going to launch Excel with that report dates workbook open. And then when that opens, I'm going to get the values in the cells from B2 to B4, those three dates that were in there, those three possible parameter values, and I'm going to store them in a variable. And then I'm going to close that instance of Excel. Then with those three dates stored in a variable, I'm going to loop over the three dates in that variable. And for each date, I'm going to open up Excel, but this time I'm going to open up Excel with that template report in. I'm going to write the current date from the current iteration into cell C2, where Power Query can pick it up. I'm then going to run the macro to run the Power Query query to get the table of data for the report. I probably don't need to do this, but I'm still just to be safe waiting 10 seconds to make sure everything finishes nicely. And then I'm going to generate a file name for it and save that template report, do a save as with a file name, including the date that I've run the report for and then close Excel. So when I run this, it's going to run it and uh, run the Power Query query three times and save three copies of the workbook. 
in the past when I've tried to do this, like I said, it's super slow, but I ran this immediately before, and there are my three output workbooks. So if I open up the um, workbook for the 30th of November, there's my report for the 30th of November. So we can automatically generate lots and lots of Excel files and put them somewhere, for example, in a file share. If I use Power Automate Desktop in combination with a Power Automate Cloudflow, I can run this on a schedule. And then instead of just saving this Excel uh, file in um, a file share somewhere, I could even send emails to people with these Excel files as attachments. So. I think that's a really cool, powerful thing to do. It is, I will have to admit, a touch slow. Um, usually when I run this without Teams running, it probably takes two minutes to run these three Excel reports. I suspect I could probably do a bit of tuning, but yeah, I think this is a viable solution for report bursting, for automatically generating these reports. The downside of all of this is, you need a Power BI, a Power Automate license, which is going to cost some money. But I still think compared to pretty much any other solution, this is probably the, the cheapest, most efficient way of just automatically generating Power Query based reports. Um, something that I'm going to show briefly, but I'm not sure is, is quite ready for BI yet, is Office scripts. So, you probably know if you're an Excel fan that VBA is the good old mature automation option, but it's not the future. VBA doesn't work in Excel online. And if you want some form of scripting language for Excel online, you've got to write Office scripts. Uh, and Office scripts allow you to create, uh, record macros and replay them and uh, you know, run tasks again on a schedule through Power Automate if you want. Um, the problem that I found with Office scripts, and I'm hopefully this is going to be fixed sometime soon, is that you can't actually refresh Power Query queries with Office scripts at all yet. Um, all you can really do is just reformat data already in Excel. But I think there are still some uses for this. Uh, if I do a, a super, super simple uh, demo here, Let's say that every week somebody sends me an email with an Excel file in and, you know, it's got some sales data that looks like this. And maybe I know I need to reformat this in a slightly nicer looking way for my weekly report that I've got to send to my boss. Well, I could do it manually. I could move this table somewhere close to the middle of the worksheet, put some column headers in, and insert a chart. But on the other hand, I could record all of those tasks with an Office script. And then here, I can just save this. And indeed, actually, nowadays, I could even put a, buck, uh, a button on the workbook to do this, but I'm going to run it manually. And there we are. It's automatically moved my data, put some column headers in, and built a chart. So again, I think this is a, a valid um, reporting type scenario. All right, let's move on to the, the next major bit of BI. This is exploratory analysis with pivot tables and power pivot. Now, this is a modern Excel user group. Um, there's probably no point me showing you a, a simple demo of um, power pivot in Excel on the desktop, because to be honest, not much has changed in power pivot in Excel on the desktop since Power Pivot was released. You know, it's a bit more stable. Um, it's um, had a few cosmetic changes, but nothing much has changed in um, Power Pivot on the desktop. Nonetheless, I have got a Power Pivot demo here. This is using exactly the same data that I was using before, but now instead of actually going in and um, running parameterized queries, what I've, effected, what I've done here is I've taken all of the data from that table that I was querying previously, loading it into Power Pivot, um, adding in some dimension tables for customer and product, and 
because the data is fairly small, or at least small by my standards, 60,000 rows, I can fit that all nicely into Power Pivot in Excel. I could handle a couple of million rows quite easily inside Excel, and then slice and dice it and analyze it easily using Power Pivot. And here's a pivot table based on that. I've got a filter, change the colors. I can change the occupation, change the calendar year. And yeah, it's great, but not really very exciting. There is, though, one really, really exciting thing that's happened in the world of Power Pivot in the last year. And that is that Power Pivot workbooks now work in the browser. So if I go back to OneDrive for Business, I can open up exactly. Actually, that was the wrong one. I want the Power Pivot demo. Open up exactly the same workbook in the browser. There's my pivot table. And now I can actually do pretty much all of the slicing and dicing and analysis that I did with pivot tables on Excel on the desktop in Excel online. It's slightly different. There's some more advanced functionality um, missing, but you know, I can again change my filters. It wakes up. There we go. Click OK. Sometimes a little bit slow, first of all, but yeah, I can change the occupation, change the calendar year. I can even change the structure of the pivot table. So let's take months off there. And so let's maybe put product name down here. And there we go. Pretty much all the pivot table functionality you would want, but Excel on the browser backed by all of the power of Power Pivot. And I think this is great for you know, making Power Pivot available for people who've only got Macs, for example, those poor people. Uh, it's great for collaborative um, exploration of data as well. Um, the problem with this, at least if we're talking about a web-based environment, is that refreshing data in the Excel data model still has to take place on the desktop. Um, you could do it on a schedule using Power Automate, for example, because you know, um, you're just effectively refreshing Power Query queries again. Um, but if you did want a pure web-based um, solution, you're going to have a problem because, to be honest, um, you know, like I said, Power Query in Excel in the browser has a very limited number of um, data sources. And even then, even when Power Query in Excel on the browser works, I don't really see how um, Power Query in Excel on the browser will be able to connect back to on-premises data sources in the way that Power BI does using an on-premises data gateway. So there's always going to be a certain amount of manual effort here. But you know, there's a lot of work happening. And if you're thinking that perhaps um, there is you know, something missing in Power Pivot, maybe it's not had enough love recently, Promise you, good things are happening in the world of Excel and Power Pivot in the future. While we're talking about exploratory analysis, there are a few other cool things that are worth showing. Let me open up a new Excel workbook. And while that's opening up, let's have a look at the Microsoft stock price. Now, I'm a Microsoft employee, and of course, I'm really, really interested in the Microsoft stock price. It has gone down about $100 this year, so um, that's grim reading for me. I won't be retiring anytime soon, so I'll probably be back here doing presentations for you in another 10 years' time. But here's the web page on Yahoo with all of these stock prices in. Let's say I want to get this into Excel for some analysis. I could do a copy and paste. If some of you here uh, know Power Query well, you would say, oh, yeah, Power Query's got some, abil some abilities to scrape data from web pages. That might work here as well. Um, but if you've ever worked with scraping data from um, web pages for data like this uh, using Power Query, you know that the people who build web pages 
very often build those web pages to make web scraping super difficult. So there's another thing that you can do here, which is fairly new that I wanted to demo. Um, it doesn't always work all that well, but you know, we'll try it all the same. Here's my table of data. Here's good old Windows snipping tool that I use an awful lot. And I'm going to take a screenshot. And let's grab all of the stock prices going back to Sure, what's going on there? All right, let's take another screenshot. Let's grab all of these stock prices. All right, let's come on. There we go. There we are. All right, so I've got the picture. Let's copy it to the clipboard. Let's go to Excel, open up a blank workbook. And then here on the data tab, I've got the ability to read data from a picture. I can read it from a file or I can read it from a picture on the clipboard like the one I've got. So let's read that data from the clipboard. Going to analyze that data and it's going to highlight some things it found that it wasn't quite sure it read well. Now, in this case, there's a little asterisk after close, so we want to get rid of that. There are some asterisks after adjusted close, which we get rid of. But looking at the numbers, the numbers all seem pretty good. It's highlighted some things it's not sure of, like this, but yeah, that's actually the right number. So I think we're all good, and I'm going to click Insert Data. I'm going to insert it anyway, and there's my table of data read from that image, pasted onto here. Let's turn this into table. Come on. All right. That's not working all right. So there we are. Let's insert a table. So we've got a table of data. And let's say that we want to analyze this and explore it, do some exploratory analysis. I've got the analyze data button up here on my ribbon. And it will have a look and it will suggest some things to do. Well, look, it's decided that perhaps I could draw a chart with open, high, and low by date. So let's insert that chart. And there we go. It's automatically built a nice chart for me, which I think is pretty cool. And, you know, I can even ask some questions. It's got some questions here. Well, let's say. Get the dates where open is greater than 260. And yeah, it's found that we could have a pivot chart based on this, automatically filtered based on the query, uh, the text that I entered to only the days where the date is greater than 260. So it's a little bit of a gimmick. And I have to admit that um, it took me a while to get a demo that worked completely perfectly. Um, I think the AI algorithm that reads the data from the tables still needs a bit more training. But, um, you know, I think it's getting to something quite interesting. And of course, the last thing that I need to show here, um, I absolutely cannot let any demonstration of modern Excel go past without having some kind of dynamic array demo. I love dynamic arrays. I think dynamic arrays are by far the coolest thing that's happened in Excel in the recent in recent history and dynamic arrays yeah they can be used to build quite pivot tabley type experiences quite interactive type reporting experiences so you know we're interested in dates where the stock price was greater than 260. so i could actually in here 
let's actually not do it there. Let's maybe do it a bit down here. Start typing a dynamic array formula and and let's look for table one. And we want to fit to filter table one data and we want to get it where table one open is greater than 260 and there's my filtered table and you know i could type 250 here and then say well actually let's filter this by not by the hard-coded value 260 but by whatever value is in a23 and there's 240 and yeah all kinds of really cool possibilities I think that you can do with that. Obviously dynamic arrays need a presentation all on their own, but I have to mention them. Okay, pivot tables are great for exploratory analysis, but pivot tables also bring us on to the subject of more formal interactive reports and dashboards. This is what most people think about when they think about um, BI, this is, for example, what Power BI is great at. I would say that you can also build some really amazing interactive reports in Excel using a combination of Power Pivot and Power Query. I have to admit, I am not artistically skilled. So when I build Excel reports, um, however nice I make them, I try and make them, they still look pretty ugly. So I hope you'll forgive me when you see how awful my nicely formatted Excel report looks. Um, but let's close down some of these workbooks. Make sure we've got some space. Let's save that. But if we go back up to here and open up Power Pivot Report, what I've done is taken what I've done here before and created, well, okay, I've, I've done the old, at least I've learned the one trick of um, hiding the grid lines. I've got a title, I've got a pivot table, and I can change the slices once again. And my pivot table changes. But also, you will notice that I've got a pivot chart here. And the pivot chart also changes when I change the slicer. Um, probably the one thing that is that I always point out when I'm talking about using Excel for building interactive reports is that it is absolutely key to understand that slices can control multiple pivot tables and pivot charts when you're connected back to the Excel data model. So, for example, if we have a look at this slicer here, I've got a report connections button up here, and that allows me to link this slicer up to my pivot chart and my pivot table. And having one slicer that controls multiple pivot tables and pivot charts is absolutely the key to making really nice interactive reports. The other thing that's worth mentioning, and this is my other favorite feature of um, Excel that nobody ever seems to know about, are Excel cube formulas. Because pivot tables are not the only way that you get data out of the Excel data model. You can also get individual values out using the Excel cube formulas. And what I've got here, again, is a slicer and some data tied to the Excel data model. But now I don't have a pivot table. I've just got values in cells. On rows and columns, I have cube member functions, which give me measure values or measure names or you know product names or occupation names and then in cells that contain numbers i've got cube value functions and that for example gives me the sales amount for management for whatever is selected in the calendar year slicer here and again 
this is great for doing more complex report layouts. Um, personally, I think that Excel cube functions, even though they're pretty old, are the best way of doing more complex report layouts. They are way, way better and more flexible than um, linked data types. So Excel cube functions are great for building more complex report layouts, for example, for financial reports. And of course, because this is all just Excel with um, Power Pivot, I can open up the same report in the browser and it all works there. So now if I want to not just um, do some uh, exploratory analysis, well, I've now got something that looks pretty much like a nicely formatted report available here in the browser all built in Excel and cube functions work as well. But there is still one more problem to solve. And that problem is, like I said, what happens if two people are looking at the same Excel worksheet at the same time? Let's simulate this. There's one person and let's pretend that Christian has come in and he's opened the report as well and he's interacting with it. The problem, just to illustrate it, is that, OK, I'm now Christian. I'm looking at the report and Christian wants to look at 2012. So he selects 2012 in the slicer. It wakes up and I'm now seeing the data for 2012. We flip over to Chris's screen. Well, Chris now sees 2012. I don't want to see 2012. I want to see 2013. Oh, OK, right. Forget that. Um, Ignore the error, select 2013. We change the slicer for 2013. And now Christian's worksheet has changed to 2013 because we're not looking at two different versions of the report. We're looking at the same report. Somebody's editing the Excel worksheet and two people are looking at it. And if they're fighting over which slicer gets selected, you're not going to be able to get any useful work done. But there is a way around this. Rather than giving people access to the Excel worksheet, what you can do is click the share button here, go to embed, and then make sure you check the let people sort and filter option here, and then grab the code. And then what I'm going to do is just paste this into Notepad. So this gives me some. HTML code with an iframe in it. Actually, yeah, I could embed the iframe in a web page, but really all I need to do is to grab the URL. And inside this URL, there is a URL parameter which should say embed view equals true uh, somewhere. Hopefully that's going to be, yes, I think it's probably like that. Let me just make sure, let's double check that that is. Come on. Because I've done this before and it doesn't always seem to pick up everything. But. It's going to be really important that the embed works. All right, let's just do it anyway. I think it's probably got the right parameter in. If I grab this and put this into a new tab, there we go, it's working. And the important thing now is if I use this embed view, any sections in slices that I make are only available to me as a user. They're not going to affect the underlying workbook. So as many people as you want are going to be able to connect to this, interact with this report. Um, it also turns off grid lines as well, which is pretty nice. And you know, those things that I do here are not going to be available to anybody else. And also, I can't just start typing in any of these cells. The only thing I can do 
is change the slicer values. So I think this is actually the key to making really good interactive Excel reports that work in the browser. There is still a downside with this. Um, it works in the browser, doesn't work on the Excel mobile applications yet. Every couple of months I try this in Excel on, the, uh, on my phone and hope that it, it's going to work. Unfortunately, it doesn't, uh, at least not in the, the iOS or Android app. OK, so that's enough of my demos. Let's come to a conclusion. Um, we all know that Excel is always the most popular uh, data analysis and reporting tool in the world. That's never changed and that never will change. But if we were to compare it against something like Power BI, I would say that Excel, especially now, we've got Excel plus the combination of Power Query plus the combination of Power Automate plus the fact that a lot of this all now works nicely in Excel on the browser. I think this makes Excel a better, you know, a really great um, BI and reporting tool. And for some types of BI, like that simple form where I wanted to type in some parameters and run a query, to be honest, it's better than Power BI. Power BI struggles with that form of reporting. So, you know, Power BI still has the edge, I would say, for building cool interactive dashboards, for sharing on mobile applications, for doing scheduled refresh, for uh, refreshing against cloud-based and on-prem sources. But you know, Excel is catching up very, very quickly. And I would say that if you're thinking about starting a new BI project, well, you know, consider Excel. It can do an, an awful lot more. All right, that's me done. Thank you for listening. Um, I'll take some questions. Yeah, let me share the screen. We have some questions, but um, some of them were already answered. First one was from Claire, uh, speaking about uh, Power Automate. Does it let you automate query refreshes? Yes, it does, because Power Automate desktop allows you to run Excel macros, and Excel macros can now ref <coughs> individual Power Query queries. Oh, uh, this is what uh, Christy already answered there, but uh, we wanted to see your view on it. And uh, there was another one. Uh, asking about um, Power Automate. Yes, Power does Automate the desktop, desktop does version? require a license. Um, don't ask me how much it costs or what the license terms are. Um, I'm sure they're available online. But yes, there is going to be a cost there. Um, Power Automate desktop is, I think it's now installed by default with Windows 11. So if you've got yep. Windows 11, you'll have it there anyway. Um, but if you want to do any scheduling, then yes, I think you need to have a a Power Automate license. I think it's the same uh, uh, approach like Power BI Desktop. It's free as a tool on your desktop, but if you want to share or do anything in the cloud, you have to pay something, some licenses, right? Exactly, yes. Well, you know, somebody's got to pay my salary. Yeah, of course. Uh -huh. uh, a question from me. Is getting the data from picture available only only on specific versions of uh, Power Query? Do you know what are the limitations? So it's not a Power Query feature. It's a regular Excel feature. And I think it's only available probably in some insiders build. But it, it is definitely public. Uh, I saw it on, on the developer E5 version, mm -hmm. uh, some insider channel, but I didn't know whether uh, you have some additional uh, info on this one. This is why I asked it. Asked it. Uh, could it be also linked also about uh, getting data from picture? Uh, it's, um, uh, this one, yeah. could it be also linked with Power it Automate? Could. It could, because Power Automate desktop, you can actually get it to record you know, mouse movements and click in certain places. Um, the problem with this approach, I think, is that, um, as we saw, Getting a data from a picture is great, but there's going to be some manual intervention where um, Excel asks you to check some of the numbers with some of the values it's found. And at the moment, it's not all that reliable. So, um, you know, you might find that um, you, know, you, it, you can automate it, but you might find that the numbers you get or the quality of the data you get is not all of that great. Okay. Thank you. Another one 
it was also from me this one uh, but i wrote it down don't do not forget it for cube formulas is there any mdx functions behind what about dax as far as i know dax is writing some mdx to local uh, servers right no um dax oh. and mdx are completely you know, parallel to each other um dax never generates mdx mdx never generates dax they're two completely separate but queer equal query languages um cube formulas like excel pivot tables generate mdx queries not dax mm -hmm. uh, as far as i knew dax in excel in power pivot it's actually writing mdx and i, I wanted to make sure now so it's not no, and in fact, pivot tables never generate DAX. The only time you use DAX with Power Pivot is to do calculated columns or measures or calculated tables. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you, the pivot tables, the key formulas, they always generate MDX. There's no DAX involved there. Okay, and last one. Uh, Claire went to a London Excel meetup on cube functions. Uh, was it uh, held by you? uh i did do the london excel meetup i don't think i've done a session on cube functions um so i don't think it was me um but i do love cube functions and i <laughs> blogged about lots of cool things you can do with cube functions and dynamic arrays and stuff yeah i saw a blog post uh, these days uh, about um, cube functions and dynamic arrays and uh, power query that uh, they are working better together uh, lately. So I'm pretty yeah. sure we'll see something uh, on this topic from you soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that were uh, all the questions until now. Let me see if anyone else uh, has anything else. I'll, I will uh, let everybody unmute now and allow camera and microphone and uh, if anyone has any additional questions uh, this is the moment because uh, we'll move to the enterprise dna raffle soon so anyone is having any other question Christy, I think we still have one more question in the chat. Um, I have a question. Yeah. yeah, I think I missed it. It was probably during the Q&A, but uh, let me check. Or whoever asked it, uh, please unmute and ask it. So I think there are two questions there, actually. So the first one is, is it possible to create Martin Excel DAX in the future release? Uh, I don't know what you mean by Mart. Um, so Rita Brata, do you want to? Data Mart. Data yes. Mart. Data Mart. Data Mart. Yeah. No, if you're thinking about the Power BI functionality Data Marts, that's not going to be there in Excel. Okay. And then we've got another query, another question, which is can I edit cell values in the embed view? Um, you've got an option that allows you to do that or not. Um, I turned that off. So, no, you can't edit cell values when you do that. Um, but you could allow that if you wanted. No. I think this is it from the questions perspective. Thank you very much. It was a great session as uh, always. Uh, loved it. And uh, we'll quickly go to the Enterprise DNA raffle now. Let me switch my screen. I is it visible? We should have the world view with the number of uh, participants in the raffle. Let me refresh it and see. Who do we have? Yeah, refresh. This uh, Power BI report is actually taking data from a SharePoint list, which is uh, filled up with a flow from the form that you uh, fill it up. So uh, at the beginning, we also had the Power Automate inside of it to randomize the IDs. This is the reason why you have the IDs in the email that you got. 
when you registered and uh, because I found some bugs on it, I gave up on the Power Automate and uh, we are running for now Wheel of Names until I have time to debug it. So the final number of participants, I don't know why is it uh, running so slow, nine, pretty international. Of course, most of us uh, are from Romania. And uh, let me check the wheel of names and also get the participants here. Of course, we are using our query to get the participants. Seven until now, final refresh and we'll paste it. Yeah, as soon as we've opened the videos, everything is uh, working slower. So, uh, Chris was right at the beginning. The turning video off, it's uh, helping. So, nine participants. Let's ruffle, shuffle the names and spin the wheel. Mihai is our first winner. Congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. That's really cool. Let's shuffle again with the remaining participants. Roxana, congrats. You're the second winner. And shuffle it again with the seven remaining participants. Russell from UK, congrats. I will contact you guys uh, tonight probably to confirm your email addresses. And uh, as soon as we, we have the confirmation, we'll uh, uh, write your names in the enterprise DNA. Uh, database. Uh, thank you all again for joining uh, the September meetup of Romania Power BI user group. Thank you, Chris, for taking the time to come and present to us. It was a really great session. Will uh, at least me? I'll have to rewatch it. And uh, thanks again. See you in uh, October. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. I will stop the recording now and uh, whoever wants to stay a little bit more for some chit chat and some additional stuff, feel free to do it.